The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Thrillers, thrilling mystery, espionage, and political intrigue? Step into the world of action and psychological twist. Join us as we go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured thriller presentation. In this exciting adaptation of the novel by H.G. Wells set in 1900, we join the eccentric Professor Caver and the rakish free-loading Charles Bedford on their extraordinary journey to the moon in a huge metal sphere resplendent with draped curtains, gentlemen's armchairs and brass fittings. Upon reaching the moon's surface they discover more than they bargained for. Within the center of the moon there is life. Taken prisoner by the calculating selenites, our heroes and their crew are soon subjected to mind experiments and terror. Responding as they only know how, with violence, will any of our space travelers return to Earth? We present James Bolam as Bedford and Donald Sinden as Professor Cavour in First Men in the Moon by H.G. Wells. Dramatized for radio by Joe Dunlop. Episode 1 No Hiding Place. But I don't understand, Charles, tonight. Faster, Cabby! Try not to knock over any drunken revelers, sir. But where, Charles? What? Where will you go? South America, Africa, best you don't know. Such a lovely night. Look how clear the moon is. I love you so much. <laughs> Oh, what a confounded mess. Take these. No. You gave me this diamond pendant and these earrings. Sell them. Take my engagement ring, too. No, you've given me enough money to get away from London. That's all I need. Why now? Why now that I've met you does the whole pack of cards have to tumble around my ears? There, I'm putting them in your pocket. Just tell me you love me, Charles. Take the next road on the left, Gabby. Of course I love you. I'll always love you. Why don't you speak to my father? It's but... too late. Please, darling, try to understand. If I want to live more than a few hours in this new century, I must get out of London tonight and on my own. Whoa! I'd park new, sir. Uh, stay here, Cabby. Shall I come with you? I shall only be a few minutes. Hopefully Spike is still waiting for me to leave the Buckingham's party in Chelsea. Oh. Evening. Spike. Well, well, well. You doing a rama, eh? No, no, I was only... No more lies, Bedford. Please, don't kill me, please, no. One more squeal out of you and this shiv will slit that pretty face of yours wide open. I can get it. I can raise it in Paris. I wasn't running away, I swear on my mother's life. A couple of days, everyone will be paid. You can't the wrong people this time, Charlie boy. Wait, wait, please, please. Listen, you can't kill me. In my pocket, there's a ring, a pendant, earrings, aspirates. Gotta be worth 300 pounds. They're yours. Say you never found me, eh? I can pay it all back. Shut up. I'll have the diamonds. Uh-huh. But first, I'm gonna make a little slit... Just there. Oh, oh, help, please! Let me go! Oh, oh, you slippery! Oh, God! I'm bleeding! Drive on, Cabby! Drive on! No! Charles, look out! Yes! Gotcha! Let me go! Anna! Cabby! You stop, Cabby! Let him go! Ah! I stabbed his hand with my hat pin. He was going to kill you. Where you can hide, Bedford? I'll find you. I'll find Excuse me.
Excuse me. Uh, I want a carriage to take me to, um, uh, Old Cliff Cottage. Never heard of it. Must be out of town. Old Zabadie Garrison will know he's a carter. If he does, he'll tell you. My dear Elise, two weeks and the isolation and solitude here has calmed my nerves more than somewhat. The village shops have extended me credit, so I'm not starving. I have only one neighbour, an eccentric-looking individual whom I see every day walking along the clifftop path. I have so far thought it prudent not to make his acquaintance. Now how Spike could find me here in deepest Kent, I do not know. My neighbour is some kind of scientist, the carter told me. Ah. A letter I dare not send. <coughs> oh, Manson doesn't work like he should. Now, he's young, Spargus. <laughs> Drink up and stop getting so air righted. Betsy, two more pints of cider. <laughs> Why the professor keeps him on, I don't know. <laughs> Why does he keep us on? We don't need three of us in that laboratory of his. Uh, because, Gibbs, Cavour has more money than sense. You see, all that stuff arrived today. Must have cost a fortune. Keep your voice down. That man is listening. Oh, oh, well, well, very cosy, you two, leaving me to unload that blasted wagon on my own. Yeah, shut your face, Manson. It's time you pulled your weight. It is just coming, Miss Badford. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing. You work for my neighbour, Professor Cavour. What's it to you? Permit me to introduce myself. Charles Bedford. I've taken a lease on Old Cliff Cottage. <laughs> so? I think I've seen the professor walking past. Oh, he likes his walk. Every day, same time. So, what's he working on? His secret. Your drinks, gentlemen. Oh, put those on my account, Betsy. Uh, what about me? And get our young friend here what he wants to, Betsy. Where you be, Mr. Bag? Jack Kibbs. <laughs> How do you do? And this is Mr. Spargus. Uh, uh. And Samuel Manson. Hello. Good health. So, is he still working on the... If you want to know anything, friend, you speak to him yourself. I intend to. Spargus is an exiler. Got a bit of a rough tongue on him. Take no notice. I like a man who speaks his mind. Enjoy your drink. A word of warning, stranger. The people hereabouts like to keep to themselves. Oh, no, no, no. It's quite all right. You're sorry, sir. Mutton and cabbage. Hope you enjoy it. It looks very interesting. Thank you, Betsy. Oh, sir. More money than sense. One of these days, I will speak to him. Oh, come on, come on. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Professor Cavour, uh, I'm Charles Bedford. Mm -hmm. I'm living at Old Cliff Cottage. I met your man Gibbs, is it, and the others in the tavern. You old and I, I stay away from taverns. Alcohol clouds the thinking process. Red meat, too. Poison to the brain. Well, certainly their mutton did nothing for my digestion. Any chance of a glass of water? <laughs> Gibbs! Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Bedford. <laughs> yes, Fisherman Beaker of H2O. Spargus? Sir? Are you watching those gauges? Yes, sir. You better come in. Uh, thank you. Don't trip over anything. Uh. Who are you again? Uh, Charles Bedford. Uh, we've met before, actually. You won't remember me. But I was at the Royal Society when you spoke about your anti-gravity experiments. Mm, I, I, I don't remember. I found your talk absolutely fascinating. Mm. Weightless metal and all that. But when I've seen you on the cliff path, I didn't realise it was you. Until I met up with Gibbs and... Um... You, uh, you've seen me walking. <laughs> And humming? <laughs> I don't hum. Oh, yes, you do. Like this. <laughs> do, 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 do I really? Yeah, well, I never realised it. I hope it didn't disturb you. No, not at all. I'm down here writing a new novel. Yeah, well, I'm, I like to walk. Clears the thoughts. I'm extremely interested in the latest advances in science, being a writer. Frightfully exciting. Here we are, a new century, a world of wonders awaiting us. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, my boy. <laughs> Come in and look. Your water, sir. Oh. Thanks, Kibbs. Nice old boy. Yes. When I told you last night about the professor going to the Royal Society, you never said you were there, Mr. Bedford. <sighs> Delicious. Didn't I, Mr. Gibbs? Through here. <laughs> yeah, they laughed at me. The Royal Society said it could not be done, but I shall prove Newton wrong. Apples can fall up. Really? Oh, this is your workshop, eh? Yeah, the laboratory. It used to be the stables. It looks very impressive. Yeah, come on, Manson. The conical flask is coming to the boil. You know what that means? 
Yes, Professor. Yes, well, go on, make the tea. You'll stay for tea, Mr. Uh, 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 Bedford. Bedford, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, good. Uh, then I'll uh, show you everything. <laughs> Bedford, the material will be quite impervious to the force of gravity. Completely weightless? More interestingly, it will harness the force of gravity to create a new high-velocity power of propulsion. I'm not sure I quite... Uh, Now, this material will force gravity to work in reverse. Any object coated in it will be thrust away from the Earth rather than drawn to it. But the applications for this will be limitless. Well, transportation, obviously, weaponry, construction, it will revolutionise everything. Professor, you're going to be a very rich man. Money means nothing to me. It's lucky for you we met. It is. Your field is science, and in it you are obviously, well, a genius. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) My line is business, the exploitation of such things. Without blowing my own trumpet, I can say I've made a fortune already. Last autumn, those bushes were covered in blackberries. I make my own cordial, you know. I had Gibbs collect baskets of them. I pulp them. With my own feet. What I'm saying is we should be partners in this venture. I would guarantee to license the material very strictly. Only those who offer the top price would have it. I don't want to sell it. You don't need to. That's where I come in. All I want to do is to prove to the world that I am right. And those closed-minded fools of the Royal Society are wrong. And you will. Now, let me have enough for a demonstration. Mm, we shall see. When can I have some? <laughs> I have made it yet. But I thought no, the way you... Believe me, Bedford, I am close. Really? Oh, any day now, maybe even tonight. Yes, well, once you have My made some, we must... point talking. undoubtedly to temperature being the last critical factor. Tonight, I intend to increase it by 20%. Spargus and Manson will feed the furnace all night. How long have you been trying to invent this stuff? Oh, let me see here. Must be all of nine years. Nine years? I've been so close for the last three years, but never so close as now. What was that? Spike! Quick, quick, quick! A weapon! I need a weapon! The lamp! I've got a gun! Oh, no, you have a Bedford. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Keep away, Spike! I'm gonna blow your cheating brains out, Bedford! I can't move! Oh no! I can't move! Bedford! Bedford! He won't find me here. He can't find me here. Good God! Cavour's laboratory! Professor Cavour! Are you there? Bedford, oh, Bedford, congratulate me! What a glorious sight! Are you all right? Oh, never been better! I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! What uh, happened? I've isolated anti gravitational polymetallurgical B7. He ain't coming to the house. What? Why not just call it Cavourite? Why? After its inventor. <laughs> Cavorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds very fine. It doesn't sound too boastful, does it, my boy? Leave the marketing to me, Professor. Uh, Blackberry cordial? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, dear. Manson and Spargus. What about them? But they were in the laboratory. Oh. Ah, well, they're martyrs to the cause of scientific research. Fortunately, they were men with no dependence, only themselves to care for. It was the temperature, you know. You saw how powerful it was. What caused the explosion? No, there wasn't an explosion. Everything lost gravity and shot up into the sky. It's up there, travelling away from Earth into outer space. Even Sparkus, what's left of him? What good is that to us? (laughs) No good whatsoever. But I have the formula now. I shall make more. I would like a copy uh, when you have a moment. I shall make more and build the first Cavalite-powered interstellar vehicle. Soon we shall be up there. You and I, Bedford. Under control, of course. How innocent it looks. Unsuspecting. What? The moon, Bedford. 
Little does it know, but its secrets are about to be uncovered. You want to go to the moon? Don't you? Professor, if this stuff does all you say, we are millionaires, multi-millionaires. Forget money. Don't you want the adventure of a lifetime? I must create the coverite within lead shields, exposing it only when we are ready. What do you say, Bedford? What? Are you coming with me to the stars? But we have to exploit the discovery here on Earth first. License it to firms, governments. Give me a hand to write this workbench. You have to understand this. Oh, the heavens are angry. Tonight, I shot a hole right through them. <laughs> Look, roof blown clean up into the sky. <laughs> oh, it's starting to rain. Uh, let's leave this till the morning. You must take a bottle of cordial back with you. Are we still partners? What? I would like you to sign this draft contract, um, just to formalise things, you know. I wonder where that pin had got to. I've spent my life in the world of finance and business. Well, where's it got you, huh? Without me, Cavarite could fall into the wrong hands. <laughs> Unscrupulous men and governments. <laughs> Unscrupulous men, eh? You have to look out for them. I can ensure... All right, if it'll shut you up, I'll sign you a piece of paper. Uh, one other thing... <laughs> Tashed embarrassing, actually. Oh, come on, out with it. Uh, the local shopkeepers want paying, and I've no money. Well, draw some out of the bank. That's what I do. No, you don't understand. I have literally no money in the bank or anywhere else. Oh, how much do you need? Well, say a hundred sovereigns? Yeah, I'll get it for you. Thank you. Uh, but first, I want you to say you'll come with me on this voyage of discovery. What about that, Bedford? Of course I'm coming, partner. <laughs> So what delights are you intending to satiate me with tonight, eh, Betsy? (laughs) We don't know what you mean, sir. What's on your bill of fare? Well, Mr. Bedford, we have oxtail. No, please, don't bother reciting the dreary list. I'll have a meat pie and a bottle of burgundy. Something good, mind you. I can't put any more in the sleigh. What? The landlord, he he says no more tea. He's a fool. What do I owe, Betsy? Two pounds, eight and a thrums, but only the landlord says... There you are, Betsy. Three golden guineas. Keep the change. Get yourself something pretty. Thanks very much, Mr. Bedford. I'll go see about your supper. More where these came from, too. (gasps) (laughs) Got you. Oh, my God. (laughs) I scared you there, did I, Mr. Bedford? Manson, Spargus, you're alive. It was Sparg's fault, Professor. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was, Professor. You told him to help me, and he wouldn't, Professor. You mean you went there? Neither of you? Is that what you're saying? Well, you let the furnace go out. Professor, he... That's it, Bedford. (laughs) I thought it was the extra heat, but it was the cooling down. (laughs) No, you brilliant pair. You've helped me create Cavorite. Cover what? Cover right! (laughs) Fascinating, Bedford, how many of the greatest discoveries of science are facilitated by accidents. Ignorant assistants who do the wrong thing. Gibbs says you're going to build a flying machine. A space ship, Sparkus. There's a whole universe beyond our planet, and we intend to see it. Don't we, Bedford? (laughs) How could we all go up in the sky? Let me show you my designs for the interplanetary vehicle. Gentlemen, I give you the Cavorite Sphere. Could we go down to a star, Professor, and bring one back? Shut up. I'd love that. Big, bright star to hang up outside my house. First stop, the moon. (laughs) We will start building straight away. sections. Uh, four and a half, Bedford. A sheet of cavalite on each, covered by a protective lead shutter, like a, like a roller blind. Now, by lifting it up and exposing the cavalite areas, we shall be able to steer and adjust speed. The windows have arrived, Professor! Jolly good, Manson. You shall be able to look out and choose your star. <laughs> up here, Bedford. The bridge of the ship, as it were. Yes, Sparkus and uh, Gibbs are laying in the wires to connect these levers and pulleys to operate the Cavarite shutters. <laughs> uh, over there, the uh, controls for internal heating, lighting, and the artificial gravity. Artificial gravity? Now, come and see the floor below, Bedford. Here, watch your step. <coughs> yes, now, down here, our cabinets, one each. That's like a liner. Uh, the saloon. 
Oh, what do you think? My well, dog's coming through. Yeah, well, we go easy with that, you men. Oh, brass hand rail for the staircase. All these books. Do you really need a library? If we meet with other beings, I want to demonstrate that we are intelligent forms of life. Well, some of us. Don't let your end drop, Nanson. Well, Bedford, what is it? Nothing. Well, where are you going? I haven't shown you the galley and the crew quarters. My dear Elise, I have written to you every day, but so far have posted none of the letters. But now, sweetest darling, I think after three months it is safe to send this one. Cavour's sphere is nearing completion. I have said I will accompany him, but I am fearful. Morning, Parson. <gasps> Anything for me? You can be a scared of him, Mr. Spike. I could get into hot water for this, you know, intercepting the Royal Mail. And over her letters. Well, be quick, then. The other day, one of them tenants gave me a funny look. I think she suspects something. You worry too much. Bank, shopping accounts. Ah, yeah, this might be what we have been waiting for all this time. Postmark. Limney in Kent. I'll keep this. You can't do that! Keep your voice down! <laughs> the tenants will give you an even funnier look if they see you with your lousy throat cut. What's on your mind, Bedford? You've been extremely quiet this evening. This is madness. What? We should be licensing firms to make small quantities of Cavarite for commercial purposes. No! This is my discovery, and I choose how to use it. For what? So that you can crow over a lot of old scientists that you got one over on them? No! You think that's what I'm doing this for? You've said it often enough. I want to add to the sum of human knowledge. I want no gain for myself. No monetary gain. You are the most selfish, self-centered... And you old... are a fortune hunter. And not a very good one either. You know nothing about what travelling in space will do to the human body? I do! We could all be killed two seconds after you expose the Cavarite. The advancement of science is not without its dangers. Don't you see? One miscalculation with this and we're dead. You're half dead already. What? Well, you're not frightened of death, Mr. Bedford. You're frightened of life. You want to do what you always do, run away. Leave me here to exploit the industrial uses of the material. Then, when you come back... For the last time, no! Oh, come with me. You're young! It's a chance to redeem yourself. I said I was coming, didn't I? Hmm. Oh, well, for a swindler, you're not much of a liar, either. We go the day after tomorrow, with you or without you. <laughs> yeah. Empty. <laughs> Get me another bottle of wine, Betsy. Think you've had enough, Joe? I'll tell you when I've had enough. Now take your fat little bottom down the stairs and get me more wine. You don't love me. You you said you did before I let you. Of course I love you, my dear. In bed with you, won't I? <laughs> You're not funny. <laughs> Listen, Betsy. How do you fancy the trip of a lifetime? What? Wanna come with me to the moon? You're drunk. Right, and you're a fat tart, but I'll be sober in the morning. <laughs> you're horrible, you are. Ah, first thing in the morning, con Cavour out of another hundred sovereigns, get back to London, marry Elise, take her to Italy. Look at that, a full moon. Now, why would I want to go there when I can see it perfectly from here? Oh, if only I could get my hands on the formula for Cavarite. Where do you want this, Professor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in my cabin, Manson. Is there much more? This is the last. I've decided we're going tonight. Full moon. Right. Everything's ready. Good, good. Nothing here to wait for. Mr. Bedford isn't coming, then? Apparently not. We're better off without him. I've sailed with wasters like Bedford. They're no good. Oh, no, no, that's, that's enough, Sparkers. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. I'll seal the door. Uh, perhaps I should give him one more chance. No, no, wait, Sparkers. Don't seal it yet. 
Oh, yes, he's here all right, Mr. Bedford. <laughs> Drunk and asleep by now, I would imagine. But if it's urgent, you, you can go up, I, I suppose. You're a friend of this, you say, Mr... Spike. Well, more of an acquaintance, really. Ah, oh. oh, up there, is he? Uh, look, just a minute. Maybe I should tell him you're here first. There's no need. You're right, Gibbs. You look a bit peaky. What? No. I was just remembering what happened with the Cavorite last time. Only difference this time is we'll be sitting right on top of it. Not a sound. Fast asleep. Bad I have to get away. For good. Somebody can't follow me. Where is he? Oh, I don't know. He's not in the room. But the bed's still warm. Where is he? Come on! Let me in, come on! I'm coming with you! They can't be going tonight. No. Once the cavalite shields are fully exposed, it may be a little bumpy. Hold on to something secure. Right. Release secondary locks on shield one and two, Mr. Sparkers. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, What's that? Someone's outside. Fit. I can't leave him here. But the shutters are already opening. It's too late. Come back, Professor. Open the door. I'm coming with you. Open the door. Come on. Oh, God, it's Spike. Come on. Open the door! <laughs> the door wheel is so stiff! I'm coming with you! I'll fetch the ladder! No time! Grab my hand! I can't reach! Who is that man? How dare you, sir? Quickly! Give me a hand! We have only seconds! The shields are opening and we can't stop them now. That's it. That's it. Come on. Forget you for this. Come on. Hey, hurry. Hurry. If the cavalite is exposed while the door is open, we will all be... That's it. That's it. But for God's sake, Bedford, hold on to something. Episode 2, Lost on the Moon. It's one no Completely breathtaking. Head over heels. Look. <laughs> Air pressure gauge, Spiders. Yeah. And you, Manson, keep that pumping steady. Oh, no, sir. Is the professor still out there, Mr. Bedford? Oh, careful, yes, get Yes, old fool. Anything could happen. Coffee? No, thanks. Oh, it's real coffee, not the professor's parsnip stuff. I said no. Well, I'm coming in. Experiencing a sudden dizziness. I'm not surprised. Could be hyperventilation. They're ringing in my ears. Sleepy. Feel so sleepy. Kavor, what's the matter? I, I can't get back into the airlock. Suit too big, cold, and, and sleepy. Look at his suit. It's blown up like a balloon. Must be too much oxygen. Manson, stop pumping. Oh, yes, sir. I feel so sleepy. Can be too much oxygen. The gauge reads normal. Come on, don't go to sleep. You have to release some of the air. I can't sleep here. Come on, come on, speak to me. Must make one more effort to release the outlet valve. It's frozen, solid. <coughs> Well, 
Get him on his bunk. Be careful, Manson. Take it easy, Professor. Manson, the medicine chest. Fetch some brand. Get his suit off. How are you feeling, Professor? No, no alcohol. No, bad for the breathing process. Look at the state of you. <laughs> Nearly asphyxiated by my own exhalations. Must modify the suit. You could have died out there, you old fool. He's fallen asleep. Go back on the bridge and tell Manson to forget the brandy. Had you worried him, Mr. Bedford? Oh, what am I doing here? The moon. And it's getting so big. Bigger than the earth now. We should be there by tomorrow. Wonder what we'll find, eh? Gold, maybe, just lying everywhere. Keep your voice down. We'll have first pick of whatever's there. I'll have a coffee, Mr. Gibbs. <coughs> Not a beer, Mr. Bedford. Just a coffee and be quick about it. Yes, sir. How is the professor? Sleeping still. Look real poorly. He'll live. Now, what's all this about gold on the moon? Oh, just talk. Everybody wants to get rich. Now, let's be clear about this. Any gold or other valuable minerals found on the moon belong to Cavour and Bedford Incorporated. What? Shh. Never thought otherwise, Mr. Bedford. Good. If we do well, perhaps we'll give a bonus to the crew, but there will be no free-for-all. Understood? Wake up, Bedford. I thought you'd like to know. I shut the cover right blind. Why? We're being drawn down by the gravitational pull of the moon. Wonderful! What? If my calculations have been the smallest degree out, we would have shot past the moon and into the nether reaches of infinite space. Oh, wonderful. What have you... Drawn down? You mean we're crashing onto the moon's of course surface? not. I've worked it all out. Oh, yeah, it's like your spacewalk. Get up and have some breakfast. By the way, my boy... We haven't come to exploit anyone. What? Anything we find will be equally shared. We'll see about that. Wonderful view, eh, Bedford? If you like craters and lifeless uh, desert. This is a dream come true, flying over the surface of the moon. Uh, don't you want your brekker? I'm not hungry. Gibbs's oatmeal porridge is a little lumpy, but... Delicious, all the same. You should try some. No. How about some vegetable kidgery? I told you I am not hungry. Oh, you are in a sulk, aren't you? <laughs> I, I know you didn't want to come with me, but now we're here. Aren't you in the tedious bit curious? You're curious enough for everybody. Mm. Hottest part of the day down there, but we shall be landing on the dark side. Who knows what we shall find? The same, only darker would be my guess. Professor! Yeah, very tasty porridge, Gibbs. Oh, look, Sparkus says some high mountains. We're heading straight for them. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Finish your breakfast, Clifford. I'm not hungry. Oh. Are we crashing? Of course not. Oh, hold on, sir. Hold, hold on. on. I'm going to open the shields. Good men, Sparkus. Leave a four to three quarters. Uh, four to three quarters. Why are we bouncing around like this? What's happening here? Calm down. It's simply air current turbulence. What? This is wonderful. Leave a six to one half. Six to one half, aye, aye, sir. This means the moon has the atmosphere, gentlemen. Air. We might be able to breathe it. She's lifting, sir. 2,000 feet. 25,000. <laughs> Up and over the mountain we go! That was close! Nonsense! A lever four back to one half. This is high enough. Look, Bedford, the dark side is coming up! Fifty feet, Professor, and drop in forward motion! Forty, thirty-eight, thirty. We'll be landing soon. Everyone find a safe place to sit and hold on tight. Why didn't I just let Spike kill me? Steady. Close both shields, Marcus. Oh, God. Here we go. Dropping nicely. Brace yourselves, everyone. Forward propulsion. 22. 20. Good. Height. 35. 30. 60. Rather too fast. 20. 20 feet. 10 feet. No! Oh, is, is everyone all right? Just about. Manson? I think I've wet myself. What's that noise? I don't know. 
Oh, we've done it! Welcome to the moon, everyone! Can't see a thing from the window. Oh, you won't, Bedford. Not until the sun rises on this half of the moon. Lucky nobody was killed. Quite an experience. That's what it was, was it? I made some coffee, Professor. Ah, parsnip coffee, I hope. Mm. Oh, yeah, wonderful, Mr. Gibbs says. Galley's ship shape. A few breakages. Nothing desperate. Good. And I'll make sure everyone stays in the saloon and keeps the curtains closed. Sun will be up soon. Very good, Professor. I will enjoy your coffee. I think we landed on snow. Uh, Quite possibly. Coffee? No, thank you. It sounded like snow. Anyway, if it had been rock, the sphere would have spit open on the first impact. Oh, nonsense. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, delicious. Well, it's possibly with snow. Yeah, minus 100 degrees out there, at least. We shall see once the sun rises. So what's the idea, eh? We come all this way, and we're told to stay in here like a load of sheep. Well, I aren't staying in here while them two go out on their own and take all the golden diamonds for themselves. Shut up, man, son. Well, I came on this trip to get rich, to see the moon, not sit in here with the curtains shut closed. Up. Keep your voice down. Why should I? Will you shut up, or do I have to I, choke the life out of you? Stop it, Spargus. Leave him, Spargus. I can't stand being cooped up here any more than you. But we have to see if we can breathe out there fast. You're a nutter, you are, Spark. A flaming nutter. Where are you going? I'm going to the crow cabin to lie on my bunk. Yeah, I'll put them on tightly, Bedford. You think the sun will be that bright? It's as dark as pitch out there still. With next to no atmosphere to filter out its strength, the sun will be a fearful thing. How well, smoked is this glass? I can't see a thing. Yeah, keep them on. The sky's turning pink over there. Sunrise is starting. It's like a furnace door. So bright. And the Lord God said, let there be light. And there was light. Man's first sunrise on the moon. Even through these, it's impossible to look for long. Oh, how it's my eyes. Magnificent. I've never seen light so powerful. I've got to look away. Yeah, I'll close the curtains. You yeah, wait before you take off the protective goggles. I wonder how deep the snow is. We will we'll know soon. My plan is... Yeah. What on earth? It's downstairs! Yes. Something's happening! I guess! What's happening? It's bouncing! Quickly! <laughs> Who's there? I can't see! Oh, my God. Close the blind, Bedford. Everybody keep their eyes averted. Professor! Is that you? I looked out and now I can't see! Easy, easy, man. The light has burnt out his eyes. He looked at that light with naked eyes. I told you all to stay in the saloon with the curtains drawn. Now calm down, Madison. You'll be all right. I hope what he saw was worth it. Help me on with the helmet, Bedford. Right. Why the oxygen suit if there's air out there? Well, we have to ascertain exactly what sort of air it is, Bedford. Could be poisonous. Once outside, I shall take off the helmet and test it. And if it is poisonous, what? <laughs> if you drop down dead? Uh, let us cross one <laughs> at a time, you know, oh, boy. Unless you're volunteering to take my place. No, thanks. But why not send out one of the crew? No, I want to do it. Right. Seal the helmet. Start pumping, Mr. Gibbs. Yes, Mr. Bedford. Wish me luck. You realise, my boy, you're a witness to a man taking his first small steps onto another planet. A small step for a man. No speeches, please. Huh? Oh. Close the airlock, Spargus. Aye, aye, sir. All right with that pump, Gibbs. <laughs> Harder work than it looked when young Manson was doing it. How's it looking out there, Professor? <laughs> Breathtakingly beautiful. Oh, the snow is melting fast. I can see soil in places and little grey pot things lying on it. Oh, my goodness. What is it? 
Well, one of them has just exploded open like a firecracker, shooting seeds everywhere. I'm walking on the moon! Test the air! In a moment. Look at him hopping around like a toy. <laughs> I wish Manson could see this. How is he? Oh, he's sleeping. That laudanum the professor gave him knocked him out. Ah, best thing. How's the air pressure, Spargus? I'm watching it. It's normal. I'll say when it isn't. Yeah, Bedford! Yes, Professor! Oh, astonishing! Plants are sprouting up from some of those seeds. I feel so light. It's true as I thought, you know. Moon's gravity is one sixth of Earth's. You know, different plants here. This one looks rather prickly. I should name it Cactus Bedfordus. <laughs> Can you see me? Yes, be careful. I just leapt 20 feet. Everything is growing so fast. Don't move too far from the sphere. Your airline won't stretch. I, I, I've just got to see what's behind here. Ah, oh, I am falling. Are you all right? Oh, oh, perfectly. I just fell about 12 feet. Didn't feel a thing. Oh, wait, something's snagged my airline. It's caught on this... I'll, I'll give it a yank. A bit fortress has pierced my glove. Now we'll find out if the air is breathable. What do you want to do? Are you sure his airline is gone? The pressure is zero. We are pumping air to the moon. He's either dead or breathing the air out there. Can I stop pumping? Yes, of course. Damn. Well, Spargus, looks like this is your chance to use the other suit. The old fool, I told him to be careful. Look at that. What? Over there. Cavour, what's he doing? He's doing somersaults in the air. He's signalling something. He wants us to open the door. It's simply wonderful, Bedford. Quite extraordinary. Uh, your rucksack. Uh, looks like you were having fun. Uh, the air is thinner than on Earth, but perfectly breathable. And although the terrain is tricky, the lighter gravity should enable us to explore quite a reasonable area each day. What's this in here? Small digging appliances. I want to pick up soil and rock. Now, put this water bottle in your bag, Bedford. Uh, Sparkers, uh, uh, have you got the compass? Professor? You're sure you don't mind missing this first expedition, Gibbs? No, sir. Why isn't Gibbs coming with us? Well, he wouldn't like there to be nobody here when young Manson wakes up. Well said. Now, now Bedford. There's a preliminary record. You know, if you find any gold lying on the surface, you bring some back for the lad and me, won't you, Spark? You can count on me, Gibbsy. Right then, come along. Now let's get underway. We only have a limited time before the sun gets too hot. Be careful as you jump down, Bedford. The lighter gravity takes a bit of getting used to. Stand back. Here I come. Oh, I'm floating. <laughs> oh, you're right, Cover. It feels peculiar. Oh, ho, ho. this is fun. Oh. Yeah, be careful, Bedford. Not take smaller steps. Watch out for Manson, Gibbs. I've known men go mad for less than has happened to him. But now you, Spargus. I'm coming. Well done, you did. Now, yes, Gibbs, all right, Spargus. He's finding it difficult to breathe this thin air, I think. Mr. Gibbs! Yes, yes Leave the airlock door open. Let the sphere fill with moon air. You and Manson should acclimatize yourselves. Very good, Professor! The first men on the moon! <laughs> A whole new world to explore! Take it easy, Manson. Kibsey, is that you? Yes, I'm here. I can't see you, Kibsey. Give us your hand, lad. There. <laughs> Want a drink? Where am I? On your bunk in the sphere. The professor and the rest of them have gone off exploring. Yeah. I wonder what they'll find, eh? I bet they're seeing some sights. <laughs> the only thing I saw was that blazing sun and it's bloody blinded me. Uh, stop a moment, Bedford. I need that trowel. I want to collect some rock samples. I wouldn't mind resting a moment. You tired already, Bedford? I'm going on up here. Uh, don't wander too far off on your own, Mrs. Spargus. We should all stay together. I won't. Snow has gone already. So green everywhere. 
Not like I thought the moon would be. Wait till the sun gets to its height. Anything looks like precious stones in with that lot. Can't you stop thinking of money even here, Bedford? Yeah, shall we move on? Well, Spargus is coming back. Can you hear a noise? What noise? <laughs> Quiet. Coming from under the ground. Yes. Very peculiar. Hey, take it easy, lad. You're spinning it down yourself. Oh, I've had enough. Take the bottle, Gibbs. Here. Let's go up to the saloon. I, you'll be more comfortable there. Oh. Oh, I feel light. That beer's gone to my legs. <laughs> That's moon gravity. Be careful. Oh. We're all light as feathers up here. Oh, feels strange, Gibbsy. You just hold on to my arm, lad. Mm, everything grows so fast up here. I shall write a very popular book about this. My visit to the moon. Make a fortune. Spuggers, where are you going? Call of nature. I'm just going off into the bush a bit. Oh, don't go too far. The vegetation is getting so dense we could lose each other. Don't worry. I've got the compass. I don't trust him. What? He's got a shifty look. Nonsense. I think we should keep an eye on him. <laughs> Spuggers! Now what? Now, come on. Sounds if he's in trouble. See a thing. I'll be your eyes for now, and I'll put the chair under your bum. There you go. Ugh. Is it daylight still? Yes. <laughs> How far from Limpney are we, Gibbs? Oh, God knows, man. Hundreds of thousands of miles. I wish I'd never come. <laughs> oh, look. You remember the desert we flew over? All them craters and the mountains of sand? Well, now they're covered in lush green stuff, like a jungle out there. All covered in spiky green plants with big leaves and got to be 20 feet high. Can you see the professor? No, but they'll be back soon. I'll go and get you something to eat. Gibbsy! Yes, sir? Don't be long. I'm frightened on my own. Oh, you'll be all right, sir. What's that? I wish I could see him. Spurgers! Where are you? He can't have gone this far. Spurgers! We must find him. He sounded hurt. Some of his damn vegetation is over head height now. Oh, that's sharp, too. Spurgers! I warned him we should stay together. Now, stop. Look, Bedford. Over there. A sheer drop into a crater. Must be at least 500 feet straight down. Yeah. Spargus! Spargus! Save your breath. If he fell down there, he's dead. Can you see any sign of a body? No. We must have heard him falling. I mean, let's see if there's a way down. Maybe he didn't fall. How do we know he came this way? What? Maybe he cut back to the direction of the sphere. Well, why would he do that? Besides, we heard him cry out. Anyone can fake a cry of alarm. He could be hurt down there. Look, if he's down there, he's dead. But I'm not convinced he is down there. But he might be. And he might also be back at the sphere with Gibbs and Manson. Spargus! Are you down there? He was very keen to learn all about flying the sphere. You're suggesting he might fly off and leave us? Oh, please, Bedford. Wait. There's that sound again. Sounds nearer. I want to go back to the sphere. Now. Very well. Which direction? This way. Are you sure? Check me compass reading. Oh, dear. Spargus has the compass. Now do you believe me? Come on. Stop. Oh, what's the matter? Why are you stopping? If this was the right direction, we'd be at the sphere by now. It wasn't this far. Distances can be deceptive. Rubbish! You're taking us the wrong way. Back this way, that hill, in the distance. That's where we made our first stop. Come on! The noise has stopped. Back this way! I keep up or I leave you here. Bedford, now listen. We're going in the wrong direction. Shut up! We tried your way and didn't find it. The sun should be on our left. Shut up! Why'd I ever come here with you? Well, you had no choice. That man wanted to kill you. If we remember? can't find the sphere, we're going to die. Don't you understand that? The sun's getting higher all the time and the water's running out. Racing around in circles isn't going to help, Bedford. Oh, God. Things aren't as bad as all that. 
I just have to think things out scientifically. Your science is what got us into this. That first day I saw you humming and walking along the cliff path at Limney. You know what I thought? I can't imagine. I thought, there is a madman. That's why I never approached you. I see. I curse the day I did. Oh, dear, we are down in the dumps. Uh, perhaps you're right. Perhaps you shouldn't have come. Your temperament is not suited to this type of expedition. And that's the end of the water. Some shade over there. Now, come on. Oh, I'm so hungry. If I thought we'd get lost, I would have bought a picnic. Some mushrooms growing here. I'm going to have some. Don't touch them. Could be poisonous. I don't care. Mm. Mm. Oh, how delicious. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, these are so good. Oh, best mushrooms I've ever tasted. You should try some. Well, I have to eat something. These are good. Delicious, uh, eh? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, very tasty. Yeah, perhaps I'll have some more. Oh. Mm. Nice vegetable soup. They'll be hungry when they get back. You all right up there, Manson? Yes! You want some soup when the others get back, Manson? No, I'm not hungry. Poor lad. Ah! But what is it, lad? Oh, no, don't! Don't worry, I'm coming! I'm coming, what is it? What is it, Manson? Oh, something touched me! Wet and slimy! Can you see it? Oh, no. No, there's nothing here. Something's in here, Gibbs. <laughs> Going to fill the sphere with these mushrooms. Make a million Bedford's magical moon mushrooms. <laughs> Hallucinogenic fungus. You don't eat any more, Bedford. Bedfordite. That's what I shall call them. Bedfordite. <laughs> Bedfordite makes parties go with a swing. Come on. Let's dance. Come on. <laughs> Who cares if your face is all wobbly? I want to dance. Stop, Bedford. You're hallucinating. <laughs> No, 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 don't hum. I shall die laughing. <laughs> What's that noise? It's humming. <laughs> you mad professor. I think I love you. Bedford, run. I don't want to run. I want to die. Ah, 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 run. Oh, God. Bedford, the ground's giving way. Well, there's nothing here, Manson. I swear to you, lad. I searched all over the sphere and... Oh, my... What, what is it, Gibbs? On the ceiling. All over the ceiling. Green and... Ah! Ah! Keep alive! Ah! Oh, no, he gives! Ah! Ah! It's on my face! My face! Ah! Episode 3 Slaves of the Luna from the sky. I saw it land, and I saw the things emerge from it. <laughs> Hideous, disgusting-looking creatures. <laughs> Were you not fearful, Tsipoof? To report truth, tf, in equal portions, fear and curiosity. <laughs> However, capturing them was simple. <laughs> Opening surface vents beneath them, and down they fell. <laughs> and where are they now? Under guard, in a safe place. What purpose do you ascertain their arrival to signify, my <laughs> friend? On that, I intend to seek guidance <laughs> at the highest level. <gasps> Look, a summons to the presence. You are to have an audience <laughs> with his great lordship. I am fearful for you. Chipoof. Be careful what you say, my friend. I've heard of those who look on the great presence never being seen again. Yeah.
I must keep my voice steady. My eyes averted. Ah, approach the great Lord with fear. <laughs> Hail to the power. On the great <laughs> presence. I want to, but I must not look. The admin server, level four, stands before you. Great lordship, step into the light. Speak. <laughs> My great lord. Creatures not of this world, such as I have never seen, <laughs> are in our midst. From whence have they appeared? I have no knowledge, great <laughs> lordship. I, I seek leave to experiment with them. You must discover what they are, <laughs> from whence they came, <laughs> their purpose and intent. <laughs> Insects, giant, wet, slimy insects. Oh. Ah, you're awake at last, my boy. Oh, where are we? Oh, my head is thumping. I warned you those mushrooms are hallucinogenic. You mean, I imagined those creatures? Well, uh, no, uh, not exactly. Look. <laughs> Oh. Oh. They don't look quite so horrifying once you oh. get used to them. Where are we? Well, deep inside the moon, of course. I had an impression of many tunnels and caves as they brought us down here. I'm stupid not to have thought of it. It's so obvious. Telescopes couldn't see life on the moon because its inhabitants live inside it. And we're their prisoners. I don't think they mean there's any harm. I've got it. What? That sound they make. It's a, it's a form of language. Huh? Oh, oh, stop it! Stop it! We have to find a way of getting out of here and back to the sphere! Calm down, Bedford. I think what we are is a spectacle. The latest arrival in their zoo. How can you be so calm, Cavour? I don't think they mean us any harm. Do they know we need food and water? What if they all just stand there watching while we starve to death? We must assure these creatures we mean them no harm. Oh, if we brought a few guns. No, no, no. Aggression solves nothing. I want to communicate with them. Oh, this is so exciting. Living creatures in another world. So what are we going to do? <laughs> what was that? Sparkus. Guards! We've come to see the creatures. Before we approach them, listen well. Watch them. Note their movements, but make no sound. I'm going to take them in this food. To go into the cave with them? Could be perilous. I know what I'm doing. Now what? This one has a bigger head, if that is a head. Well, he certainly looks different. A smaller body. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, well, what's this? Yeah, look, Bedford. He's brought us some food. So much for starving to death. Don't touch it. Thank you. Food. Yes, very good. I eat. Um, yes. <laughs> Green, smelly mush. They're obviously vegetarians. You see, Bedford, I have something in common with them already. <laughs> Me, Cavour. Him, Bedford. You... You're frightening him. He's backing away. There has to be a way to communicate with them. Now let's have a taste of our first moon food. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. I have to find a way to communicate. If I gain good knowledge from them, I could become a level three, or even be careful. Ah, too much ambition can destroy. Mm, delicious. 
Food and water, they are looking after us, Bedford. No doubt they are wondering exactly what we are. Imagine if they turned up on Earth. Wouldn't we put them in a cage? No, we'd kill them. Maybe they're fattening us up. You have a very pessimistic and suspicious mind. Well, I find that works best, life being how it is. Oh, you're saying that with that attitude, your life's been a success so far. I've been unlucky, that's all. You had to leave the Earth or you would have been killed by that man Spike. <laughs> very successful. I'm not going to sit here waiting for whatever they have in mind for us, that's for sure. I'm going to mm. jump on the next one that opens that door and make a break for it. Oh. So far, I have failed to determine any useful intelligence, great <laughs> lord. This is disappointing. Perhaps we should take them to a planner for <laughs> deconstructive work. No. I mean, great lord, please, let me have a, a little more time. A few spans to gain their confidence. <laughs> then I know I can learn much. Very well. I give you another span to find some answers. <laughs> the audience is ended. But there are still many experiments, great <laughs> lord. Silence! We have spoken! <laughs> One span more. They're releasing our chains from the walls. There you see, Bedford. Where's Spargus? Oh, my. careful. They want us to go with them. Where you take us? What do you want? What's wrong? It's nothing. It's nothing. I think we should go with them. I'm staying here. Bedford. Ooh, it stung me. It's like an electric shock. Isn't it? it hurts. I got the same thing. Mean us no harm, eh? The next one that tries to do that will get my fist in now, it. Don't of our violence. Don't even think of it. They may have telepathic powers of which we know nothing. Our only hope is to convince them that we come in peace. <laughs> Something to do with ventilation, perhaps. It's a huge tunnel. I wonder where it leads. Now, please, Bedford, no thoughts of escape. Look, look, up there, watching us. It's the one who brought us the food. Where? Up on the gallery, there. They all look the same to me, green and slimy. Where do you think they're taking us? Oh, I can't wait to see. This is a very sophisticated civilization. That machine was quite awe-inspiring. Just think what we will have to tell the world when we get home. If we ever do. Look down there. Do you see what I see? It's Gibson Sparkers. Yeah, I, I knew they meant us no harm. And why have we still got our wrists chained together? So, they got you both too, huh? <laughs> This is very perilous. I wish to observe. They do not exchange touch. See that showing of their teeth. Does it mean friendship, you think? Gibbs, are you all right? Professor, Mr. Bedford, you're alive. So far. Has the great... Lord agreed to this? If one wishes advancement, risks have to be taken. They came inside, Professor. Dozens of them. I tried to fight them. Have you seen Manson? No, no, we haven't. Not so far. I expect they killed him because he couldn't see. We don't know that. Do you still have the compass, Spargus? I lost it when I fell down that mantle. Oh, listen, all of you, do nothing to antagonise them. They might be going to kill us. Or keep us as slaves. We looked apart already with our wrists in chains. <laughs> ah! You do that again one more time, you stupid. Do what they want. Even if we escape, how can we find our way out? It's a veritable labyrinth down here. There's still a chance I'd like to take. What about you, Spargus? I'd rather die fighting than live out my life as a slave down here. I keep thinking about young Manson. He was so terrified. I should have done something more. We'll do something more as soon as the time's right. <laughs> Mediterranean River and an underground waterfall. 
Isn't this amazing, Gibbs? I hope they aren't going to walk as much further. I'm exhausted. We come on. How did you think we are, Bedford? Can't be that far. The air is less muggy. There is much lighter here. They have to see the ribbons of light like molten sapphire. Bedford, over there, look. A tunnel going up. I think it might lead to the surface. These chains. What do you think they're made of? It looks like gold. Now we're in a better light. It does, doesn't it? It can't be. They're too light. Something's being lowered from the cave roof. The ravine's very deep, Professor. You can't see the bottom of it. No, no. It goes down at least half a mile. They are gold. Look, I've shined it up a bit. We're chained with solid gold. Why make something like this out of gold? Who cares? Gold links can be pulled apart. Try it, Sparkus. If we can get our hands free... It's coming apart. It is gold. Well, gold must be a common metal here. See them digging over there? Their shovels are made of the same stuff. We must get our hands on some of those. Got it! Oh, such sophistication. Oh, they're very advanced, you know, Bedford. Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. Yeah, we're just talking. Mr. Brunel would have been proud of such engineering. They have so much to teach us. Personally, I'd rather be the one giving them lessons. Look out, Professor, behind you. What on earth is his purpose, I wonder? Bridge to the other side of the ravine? Oh, don't be so stupid, Bedford. It's too narrow. It's no wider than eight inches. Well, look, our guards are crossing it. Just strolling across, like they were on the ground. They're insects. Never seen a fly on the ceiling. <laughs> It is too narrow for us. You free, Spargus? Yeah. Both hands. Just holding onto the chain. Good. Now let's see how many of them we can shove over the ravine. No, 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 no. Keep away. I, I don't wish to be stunned. No! No! Substantial than a cockpit. Kill as many of them as I can! Oh. Quickly, get Spartus oh. off this tunnel! Oh. Yes, oh. Wait! Wait! They were going to kill us some more for the genius of those stupid at times. Now come on! Let's go! Come on, come on! Ruined oh. everything! Spargus, give give the hand! Oh. They will never oh. trust us now! You are responsible! You have exceeded your position. Extinguish them. Great <laughs> Lord, we shall recapture them. All I require is one span to learn all there is to know about <laughs> man. That is what they are, is it? Man is a very primitive savage being. No. I command they be extinguished on sight. <laughs> but Do not look upon the mighty presence. Bow your head. We better stop and let the professor and Gibbs catch us up. Uh. What's that strange noise? It seems to be coming from the water. It's peaceful somehow. Dreamy. You want a drink? Oh, it's like a maze, these tunnels. We could be going round in circles, Spargus. Bedford! What? Dozens of dead moon creatures suspended just under the water. You haven't drunk it? No. Good. Look! It's Manson! Where? Over there, under the water. He's breathing. Help me, Bedford! Bedford! We found Manson! He's alive! What? Oh. Down there! Oh. Oh, it's him, all right. I knew they wouldn't have killed him. Only man kills without fault. Uh, lay him down here. Yeah, get out of the way, Spargus. Uh, let me examine him. Uh, uh, yes, yes, buddy, he's alive, all right. Where's Gibbs? Uh, he's just coming in, not very well. His heart, I think. Uh, Gibbs, we found Manson. What? Manson, you found young Manson? Yes, his vital organs are strong. Where was he? Under the water. Well, he can't have been. He was. In with all those moon creatures. Then it can't be water. So blue. Some kind of healing substance. Very interesting. Look, we haven't time to hang around. They must be following us. What are we going to do about Manson? I'll carry him over my shoulder. It's, it's all right, Manson. Professor Cavour here. Now, how are you feeling? Professor Cavour? Yes, yes. We're all here. Safe and sound. What are you all staring at? You... You can see us. Of course I can. Well, uh, Hello, Gibbsy. You're right, old fella. How are you feeling, Manson? Never felt better in my life. 
I must get some of that liquid. No time. We have to get moving. No, Come on, you Professor. You only take a moment. Oh, I'm very glad to see you, lad. I thought you'd been killed. Oh, my goodness. Those creatures are... He was blind, Bedford. You saw his eyes. Burnt out. Those creatures have somehow made him see again. I must analyse this liquid. This could be the cure for all human ailments. Not death, though, I bet. And that's what we're facing if you don't get back to the sphere. There's a passage up here. Bedford, you made a terrible mistake. What? These moon people are scientifically so advanced of us, we ought to be learning from them. For the last time, will you understand we had no yeah. choice? Yeah, but I, I shall call them Selenites. Call them what you like, but let's get it's moving. Selenite. It's from the ancient Greek word for the moon, Selene. Intelligent beings like these deserve a better name than moon creatures. <laughs> You, you must kill no more of them, Bedford. Promise me. Get on your feet, Cavor. Manson, help Gibbs. Oh, sure. There's three moon creatures coming down the tunnel. They've got weapons. Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Arrows. Very peace-loving. Everybody get down! They are not the creatures, Sparkus. We are the creatures. Shut up and get behind this rock. Let's get out of here. I think you're right. Come on. Let's get moving before more of them turn up. Bedford. What? I'm not coming. What? Uh, leave me here. I shall throw myself on their mercy and hope to learn all I can. Like hell you will. Help me get him to his feet, Spargus. I'll come not on. be party to any more killing. We need you to fly the sphere. You have to come with us. No. Let me go. You're coming with us if I have to drag you. <laughs> You are risking more than your promotion, Tipoof. I cannot allow them to be extinguished. But the great Luna has decreed. I looked at him. He is simply another planner. No more, no less. Tipoof, think about what you're doing. I have. Will you help me? We're definitely moving up this time. Wait, Mr. Bedford! Now what, man? I know a quick way to the surface. What? It's through this crack in the wall. It can't be, it's just... It is, I tell you, Spark, I've never been more sure of anything. See, it's wide enough for us to squeeze through. Walk is wider once you're inside! Spargus? No, I'll go in last, just in case. Gibbs, in you go. I can't go any further. I got this pain in my arm. I can't get my breath. Well, here, drink some of this. Are you coming? In a minute! Oh, catch throw! Must be good for you, then. That's what Nanny used to say. <laughs> Professor, Gibbs, get moving. Selenites, dozens of them. Coming from down there. Move yourself. Uh, Spargus and I will hold them off. Keep my hand, Gibbs. I'll help you through. They've seen us. You gonna fight? Yes, I'm actually beginning to enjoy slaughtering these things. <laughs> Can you see that, Gibbsy? Yeah. Up ahead! Yeah. Daylight! Yeah, good boy, Manson. Yeah, come on, Gibbs. <laughs> Not much further, and we'll be back on the surface. <laughs> 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 Ah, look at them, <laughs> running away. We are supermen in this world, Bedford. Oh, yes. I plan to bring a fleet of cavalry powered spheres next time. I'll colonise this world. Think how much gold there must be here. Got to get back to the sphere first. Pick up as many of their weapons as you can carry. Yeah, all solid gold. Cavour <laughs> Bedford Incorporated property, I presume. You can carry it, Bedford. What? Uh, or do you and I share everything equally now? Of course, Spargus. You're uh, my partner now. Uh, Cavour isn't interested in money. I'll take this axe. Oh. Uh, now, come on. Let's find that crack and uh, get out of here. Uh, where is it? What? It should be here. But it must be further back. Where is it? Uh. Come on, Gibson. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, we're on the surface again. Thank God. I told you it were a shortcut. The sun's past its peak. The leaves are wither already. I estimate four hours to darkness. Which way to the sphere, Professor? Oh, no. It's over there, hidden in a crater, not that far. You think so, man? No, I recognise this place. This is the way the, uh, uh, what did you call him, Professor? Well, the, 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 the selenites. The, the way the selenites brought me down into the underground caves. Don't you remember, Mr. Gibbs? I didn't really take much notice. We'll be back at the sphere in no time. We have to wait for Bedford and Spargus. They aren't coming. What? You heard their screams. The selenites got them. 
The first meeting of two worlds that it ends like this. Bloodshed and war. I should never have brought human beings to this world. Yeah. Manson, where are you going? You stay here. Well, come back. Not Manson. Manson! Trust me. Stay there. Professor. What? How could Manson recognize this place? He was blind when they grabbed us. Over there. Daylight coming in from that tunnel. We're free and clear. Creatures! <laughs> Sparkers! Why, you... We're teaching them. They're getting better at this, Bedford. Does it look bad? It's bad enough. Don't leave me to die here, Bedford. What are we going to do, Professor? Manson hasn't come back. Oh, look, Gibbs. The Earth is just rising above the horizon. It's so beautiful, so blue. We're done for, aren't we? I wanted to bring a message of peace and knowledge. And look what has happened. There's no hope for mankind. It's getting cold. Our best chance of survival lies with the Selenites. Think. They're coming. What's it to be, Gibbs? Certain death or uncertain future. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, God be thanked. Professor? Manson? Anybody there? Anyone here? Damn. I can't fly it on my own. Hello? You finally got here, Mr. Bedford. Oh, Manson! You gave me a scare. Why didn't you answer me? Is Spark with you? Spargus is dead. So it's only you and me? Last men on the moon. What? The Professor and Gibbs? Both dead. That damned old fool. I found the sphere when I went Cavort back for... dead? Typical. I'll wager he just stood there and did nothing. No weapons. We come in peace. And why wouldn't he give me the formula for Cavorite, eh? Because he'd rather have his invention die with him than lose any of the credit. Is that all he was to you? The inventor of Cavorite? I thought he was your friend. Maybe we'll have time for morning once we're on our way back to Earth. Can you get us back? God knows. Now, come on. You'll have to help me. Come on! Move yourself! How can I help you? Just do what I tell you. Oh! There's hundreds of them! Swarming towards the sphere! Let's get the air out! See you! Kill it, Manson! Hit it with something! What's the matter with you? Don't you see it? Just trying to. Up on the bridge, Manson. Let's get away from here. Quite a send off. I'll be back in force to wipe you lot out. Believe me. Now! Leave us one to four. Come on, Manson, what's the matter with you? Get on those levers. Do it. Do what he says, Manson. You are one of us now. Do as I command. Manson? What's wrong? Nothing. Sorry, Mr. Bedford. Just tell me what to do. Coverite shields lifting in three, two, one. Pull as hard as you can. Nothing's happening. It isn't taking off. The Selenites are blocking the Cavorite with their bodies. It's not lifting. It's going to explode. Episode 4. Time runs out. How do we turn the sphere towards Earth? What? Deep space. We're speeding into deep space. Shall know my fate. <laughs> Courage, my friend. Just spoke out in your defense. You will be free. Oh. <laughs> Have my life extinguished. That's 
sound. I wonder what it signifies. Fascinating. Professor. Ah, Gibbsy, you're awake. Do you think we'll ever see you home again? Of course we will. One day. I'll find a way to communicate with the Selenites. Get you more of that restorative water. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> Sorry, Professor. <laughs> you there! <laughs> and my friend is sick. I need help for him. <laughs> you don't understand. Lower orders are meaningless. <laughs> you wouldn't try to sleep, Gibbsy. You'll be all right. <laughs> Cavor and Gibbs, last humans on the moon. Well, we have to look after each other. You see what they can do. They gave Manson new eyes. Well, they'll fix you. You'll be as right as... Gibbs. Gibbs. Oh, no. It's like driving anything. It, it has to be. If I expose the left-hand coverite sheet, the sphere turns right. The professor made it seem more complicated. Well, he would. Lever 4, the left coverite shield. Get on lever 4. Are you sure, Bedford? We're dead if we don't do something. One, two, three, go! So, you accept responsibility? For the demise of so many at the hands of these... ...mans. It was the quest for knowledge, great lord. You disobeyed my command to extinguish them. Yes, great lord, but now there is no more danger. Attend my judgment. You shall forthwith... Be elevated to level three! I kneel in obeyance, great lord. You will learn all about man and how he lives. <laughs> and discover the secret of travel to other worlds. Fail, and you will be extinguished. Are we... Are we turning? Yes! Yes, slowly! The Earth's coming into view! Uncover the other shield! Leave us one and three! Now! <laughs> You're too late! Gibbs is dead! You let him die! What are you doing? We're going home, Manson! <laughs> I estimate four days. What's the matter? Nothing. Look, I'm as sorry as you are about how it turned out, but we're alive. Next time. Next time? Oh, yes. Next time we'll be armed. Plenty more gold where this came from. You'll have your share, don't you worry. I don't want any of Solid it. Solid gold. Got to be 300 pounds of it. I'll put it in my cabin for safekeeping. We're going home, Manson. It's over. No, it's just beginning. Come in peace. Welcome to the moon. Sparkers, Sparkers. Where are you? Sparkers are responding. Increase pressure. Lights inside the moon. Wake up, Cover. Wake up. Oh, my head. It will stop hurting in a moment. You are among friends. I can understand you. <sighs> no secrets now, Earthman. Mustn't let Mr. Bedford see this. No. Manson, I need you to... 
What are you up to? What? What are you trying to hide back there? Nothing. Let's have a look. Holding out on me, eh? More gold, is it? Damnation, is this? Where did you get it? We seek knowledge. What? What do you mean, we? We want to learn more about the Earth, people. Manson? What have they done to you? Huh. You're one of them. Feeling better, Professor <sighs> Professor. Am I dreaming? Are you speaking English? You understand me? Yes. But I've I... tapped into your brain. A small operation to locate your language center. <laughs> and copy it into mine. Into my brain? Yes. I remember the sound of a drill. Smell of burning. Professor, I have the same vocabulary as you now. <laughs> At last, we can communicate. Yes. Yes, I hear you. Yes. I'll do as you say. Bradford! Where are you? Uh, what are you doing with the solenoids machine? I'm taking this, whatever it is, and I'm going to throw it out of the sphere. No, you can't do that, Bedford. They've told me to kill you. I have to do what they say. He's going down the chute. I'm stronger than you, Bedford. Let it go or I'll break your fingers. All right, all right. I need this to send messages back to the moon. They want to help us when they come to Earth, Bedford. What? <laughs> Telling you, ah, I won't tell him anymore. Oh, oh, Mr. Bedford, there's no point in running. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, could you have saved Gibbs? If he had been immersed in the water, perhaps. Yeah, well, we made a bad start. The one you call Spigus was found lifeless on the surface. And Manson and Bedford? They took the transport. What? They'll never reach Earth. Neither of them know the first thing about flying it. Come down here. You remember this place, Kither? Yes. Please you find this waterfall, then from the spark that started killing your people. I tried to stop them. Why did they do it? They were afraid. Of what? You. You and your people. Man kills when he is afraid. He was there sometimes. Mustn't sleep. He's waiting till I'm asleep. Manson, I hear you. Manson, I have the axe. Come near me and you're dead, whatever you've become. Why don't you sleep, Mr. Bedford? It'll be better once you sleep. Just <laughs> come with me. Oh, no, not this time. You don't get away this time. Oh, oh Charles. Charles? Please. Charles. Oh, you're one of them! Oh, God. I fell asleep. Yes, you did, Bedford. Can you communicate at a distance with this equipment? Uh, yes. These are the senders. Our beef, or speech as you call it, goes in here and travels out. Absolutely incredible. But you do not have machines like this on your world? Mm, we have something called wireless telegraphy, but Senior Marconi's machines look nothing like this. Simple. <laughs> Is it not? Very impressive. Now, there was a scientist, uh, uh, Dr. Tesler, I believe, in America, who reported picking up wireless signals from space last year. Uh, no one believed him, <laughs> including me. But perhaps he heard a message from this very cave. Perhaps. <laughs> Come with me. You are going to see our store of knowledge. Our wisest beings exist on this level. They are called Level Ones, and they will answer all your questions. These are creatures, then? I mean, selenites, like yourself, Saipa. Not entirely. 
Indeed, they may look rather strange to you, but do not be afraid. <laughs> Nothing could surprise me now. <laughs> Prepare yourself, nevertheless. into the airlock. You won't feel a thing. You'll be a new star floating through space. No! Oh. Oh, no. through their brains. The level ones have no need of arms or legs. They wither and are removed by surgery. Ask anything you like. <coughs> These are the repositories of all our knowledge. What existence is this, suspended in liquid like that? The liquid feeds only the brain, <coughs> enlarging it to hold more knowledge. You are shocked, Professor. <coughs> I told you to prepare yourself for their appearance. Ask a question. Yes, right. Who rules this world? The Grand Luna. May I see him? No one may look upon him. You may, on summons, be in his presence with your eyes lowered. I would welcome a summons. <clears throat> the Grand Luna has the largest brain of all. But where are your books? Your libraries. These are our books and libraries. On Earth, all knowledge is written down. You have knowledge in your head, though. <coughs> knowledge to share? Well, yes. What is the secret of Caverite? We wish to build our own sphere. <laughs> My dear Saipuff, that would be quite impossible. The materials required are not here on the moon. You will find a way. Uh, this is Professor Cavour, late of Lipney in Kent, last survivor of the first expedition to the moon. I speak to you from the interior of the moon. No one will hear you oh. on your world. Well, perhaps not, but it will make me feel less lonely to try. What is lonely? I mean, no one, to, no one who understands me. I, I feel like... I even missed that thorn in my side, Bedford. I, I'm in a bad way. We do not feel. Yes, I, I know. You must make Caverite. Well, yes, well, I, I cannot stop thinking of those living encyclopedias. It is their existence. Do you too not seek knowledge? They have an insatiable hunger for knowledge. It is their whole existence. Oh, God knows I wish to believe they feel nothing but to be fixed like that. Uh, unable to move. Un unable to feel contact for all eternity. Continue to use the sender if it makes you happy. <coughs> but when the Grand Luna... <coughs> summons you, you must give him the secret of Caverite. Ah, oh, it is hopeless. One more sweep of the sky and then I must get some sleep. The stars are not communicating this evening. It is imperative that I... Something there. It's, it sounds like a human voice. What? I am on the moon. Is inhabited by innocent oh. creatures. Anna! Anna, come and hear this! It's amazing! Tunnels. Anna! They I need a witness to this! Anna! Anna, quickly, come! Sophistication. Oh. She must be sleeping. Oh no. Damn, it's gone! I didn't imagine it. I didn't. Demand what? that I. With yes! Their ruler, the Grand Luna. A voice. From the moon! I was 
looking out the scullery window about 5.30 and there it was, washed up on the beach. I thought I was dreaming, Doctor. Look at it. It's like no shipwreck I ever saw. A bathosphere, perhaps. A what? A diving bell, Perkins. Can't think what else. I've never seen one so large, though. There's a window up there. I'm going to climb up. It looks more like it's been in a fire or something rather than the Atlantic Ocean. It's covered in scorch marks. No. no. Can't see anything. anything. Glass is all charred. Doctor! What? The, the door's opening. I don't like the look of this. It could be anything. Oh, my God! Oh. Hey, all about it! Man claims trip to the moon. Read all about it! Paper, miss. I've only a shilling. Can you change it? That's right, miss. Rum old yarn, eh? Yes. He says he was up in the moon. Says it's full of insects. Anything to sell newspapers, eh? I suppose so. Look at him on the front page. He don't look mad. Charles! Yes. Fits very nicely. Not at all bad for a local Devon tailor off the peg. Yes, who is it? A visitor from London for you. I told you I don't want to speak to any more reporters. I know, sir. It's a friend. A young lady. Elise. Bring her straight up, Perkins. She must have read about me in the papers. <gasps> you! Not a Saham Bedford, or I'll slit your throat. This is Professor Cavour speaking from the moon. If anyone can hear me on Earth, try to discover if Charles Bedford is alive and would tell him Cavour feels a degree of guilt for ever involving him in this venture. In what I believe to be the last days of my life, yes. I would like to make my peace with him. Yes. I'm sure that he is long dead, but in this alien world, no. I still have hopes for him. Come back. If not for myself. Come back, Cavour. Oh, poor man. If only I could find a way to respond. Wait. Paid for. Bedford! The story in the newspapers! Anna, I wish to send a telegram! And this is the bridge, see? These levers operate the coverite shields. What is it? No, 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 don't touch them! I, I flew it back from the moon. It's true. So? Where's all this gold? Spike, I'm so filthy rich. What I owe you is a mere flea bite, believe me. <laughs> I said, where's the gold? Oh, be careful, I, I sent it to the bank in Taunton. Spike, if you kill me, you'll get nothing. It's Saturday night. Sunday tomorrow, you'll have to wait till Monday. Right. <laughs> well, I'll make myself comfortable oh. here, then. you get me a bottle of scotch. What? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm, I'll have to get it from the hotel. Do it! Uh, yes. I'm Bedford. Yes? If you're not back in half an hour, I'm going to hurt you. Not kill ya. Understand? Just going to make ya squeal. We have been interested in your messages to Earth. Uh, oh, oh, well, it's just a mild distraction. No one there has equipment to hear them. You must do this no longer. <laughs> Orders of the Grand Luna. He wants you to use your brain only for us. Oh, well, as you say, uh, I'm your guest after all. Here we are, Mr. Bedford. Another bottle of scotch. Your friend likes his tipple. Mm. Charles? Elise! Oh, my... Elise! How did you get here? Oh. I thought you were dead. I may be soon. Oh, come over to the fire. You're uh, freezing. Well, I walked along from the station. There were no carriages. Oh, Elise. Oh, damn. I wanted it all to be so different when we met. What's wrong? Spike is here. No! 
He saw my picture in the papers. So stupid letting those reporters... Where is he? Down on the beach, taking up residency in the spheres. What are you going to do, Charles? Pay him off tomorrow when the bank opens. Oh. But I know I'll never get him off my back now. Oh, no. Mr. Bedford! Oh. On the beach! Quickly! What? It sounded like an explosion! Your spheres exploded! Oh, my... Spike! It wasn't an explosion. It was Coverite racing up into outer space. That's the end of it. Aren't you going to open your telegrams? No, there'll just be more newspapers and curiosity seekers. Throw them on the fire. No, I'm opening them. I had such plans to have the Coverite analysed and put into production, to go back and... Oh, well. Charles, this one from Italy. What? Read it. Oh, my God. Through here, Mr. Beth. I'm not too late. No, any moment now. If he signals at his usual time. I thought he was dead. He thought you were too. Uh, I have to speak to him. Quite impossible. Don't you think I have tried? Uh, I've brought this. What is this? It came from the moon. I think probably the same kind of thing as Cavour's using. You should have let me have this at once. Well, you've got it now. Can you work out how to operate it? Astonishing. Can you make it work? Is it given time yet? Look, Dr. Wendigi, I have to speak to Cavour. Let him know that I'm alive. <laughs> I command the alien into the light. Keep your eyes lowered. Nonsense. I'm an Englishman. I may look at whoever or whatever I choose. Ah! The secret of Camerite! Our world is devastated by hatred, one race against another. Our skies are dark with pollution and, and wars. They were great lord, why would you wish to visit such a place? To destroy your kind and ensure no more man come to our world. Tell us the secret. This is how all the other transmissions start. Let me speak to him first. How do I switch this on? No, until he speaks, I cannot set the coordinates of the transmitting telegraph. It would be useless. Come on, Cavour, speak to us just once more. Come on. Wait, huh? God help me, I have killed my guard. What? And come here secretly to send one last message. Cavour, I'm I here. It's them. Bedford. I'm alive. Snaps. Why isn't and he hearing me? I haven't got his frequency yet. Monsters. Hurry. Cavour, Cavour, I can yeah. hear you. Can you hear From me? Earth, this will be my last message. Oh. I hear them coming. The formula for Cavorite is as follows. <laughs> 200. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Let me finish this message before you. No, uh, oh, oh. Come on! Come on! Give me the formula! There. Finished. Well done, Charles. Let me see it. Of course, everyone's going to say it's fiction, but it's my story and Cavour's. The First Men in the Moon. <laughs> Charles, what a wonderful title. Oh, it's amazing to think that that bright crescent over the bay is where I was with Cavour. Do you think anyone will ever go there again, Charles? They'll have to rediscover Cavorite first. Mm. One of these days, I might just remember. He was always chatting on about it back in Limpney. It was definitely bauxite and helium. Yes, he is. Help! What else? Don't try to speak, Cather. What are you doing to me? Enlarging your brain, Professor. <laughs> You're going to have all the knowledge you ever wanted. Then you will take your place in the hall of no! You will be our Earth Encyclopedia. No! My arms! In my legs! What have you done to my body? Your brain is all you need. Now, about Cavorite. Uh, help me! Help me! 
in First Men in the Moon by H.G. Wells, you heard Donald Sindon as Professor Cavour, James Bolam as Bedford, Gary Olson as Manson, and Tom Georgeson as Spike. The part of Elise was played by Jilly Bond, Gibbs by Anthony Jackson, Brown and the New Cellar by Robert Whelan, and Perkins by Nick Mercer. Professor Wendigi and the Selenites were played by Kerry Shale. The music was composed by Robert Rigby. First Men in the Moon was dramatized for radio by Joe Dunlop. It was produced by Michael Cameron and Stuart Richards and directed by Martin Jameson. First Men in the Moon was a Mr. Punch production. Help me!